Welcome to another session of our Hadith class, and we are studying the Hadiths from the book entitled Prophetic Parables of the Prophet Muhammad. And let's put the Hadith up for discussion tonight on the screen. And uh, the source of this Hadith is, uh, let me see, I forgot what the Hadith was. <laughs> What's this, the warrant? Oh, the source of this hadith is Sahih Muslim. Let me fix it so everyone can see. The source of this hadith will be Sahih Muslim. And for those of you who have not yet picked up your copy of the book, uh, The Prophetic Parables, there's the link. Um, it was up here. I guess I, I don't know. It's www.atleyonline.com. And pick up the book. It's only $5, guys. There it is. www.atleyonline.com. Go there to get this book and all the other books that we are teaching from here at Sunnah Followers. And again, this hadith, the source of it is Sahih Muslim. It was narrated by Qabisa bin El Mukarik and also Zuhair bin Amir. They said when, the, when Allah sent down the verse of the Quran, where Allah says to the Prophet Muhammad to warn your closest relatives. When that verse came down, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to a rock of the hill. He climbed on top of a hill and he climbed up to the tallest rock and called out. He said, O sons of Abdul Manif, I am a warner. And my similitude and your similitude is like a man who sees the enemy advancing and goes to guard and warn the people. But he's afraid that the enemy might get there before him. So he says, be on guard, be on guard. You know, and that's what our prophet did. You know, when Allah sent down that verse, he told the prophet, go out and warn your relatives, warn them about you know, the hellfire warned them about the day will come where they will be raised up and, and held accountable. So he was from the Quraysh and all the Quraysh were re related to each other. So he climbed on top of that hill and said the same way you all trust me. You've always trusted me. I haven't changed. I'm just sent to be a prophet and a warner. The same way I would warn you if the enemy was coming. The same way if I stood on top of this hill and told you that the enemy was advancing, you would believe me and you would pick up your arms and you would come out the fight. Well, treat this the same. I'm warning you of the day in which Allah will hold us all accountable. Just as you would believe me if I told you an enemy was coming, believe me now. But as you guys know, the Quraysh didn't. You know, they didn't want to accept him as a messenger or as a prophet or a warner, and they chose to fight against him. But from this wonderful hadith, we learned that our prophet Muhammad honestly cared about the people. He didn't want to see any of them end up in the hellfire. So he did everything in his power to try to warn them and convince them that this world is just a temporary existence for us. That it's all about striving for the hereafter. And just as he was known for his good character before he became a prophet, you know, he's always had that good character. He was always trustworthy. He was always honest. He was always pious and good even before he became a prophet. And also from this hadith, you learn that when it comes to trying to save people from the hellfire, we should always begin with our own relatives. Save your soul and your family first before you go out trying to save other people. And also, just as you guys know, the Quraysh rejected the prophet and he had to fight against them. And they ended up losing. It took a few years. It took 13 years or so or, or more 
you know, not 13. It took more, like 20 some years, they ended up losing. Well, that's the same lesson that we need to learn in life. People who stand in the way of dawah, they will eventually lose. They may appear to be on top, but their victory is temporary. They will eventually lose the war. They may win a battle here and there, but they will lose the war. And also we learn from this hadith that just because a person is related to you, that doesn't make them good. Just because the Quraysh were related to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't save them from the hellfire. Look at Abu Talib. Abu Talib was the Prophet's uh, uncle. He still is in hell. And he was uh, 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 related to the Prophet. The Prophet's mother and father, they're in hell too. And they were his parents. So just because a person is related to you doesn't mean that that person is excluded from Allah's uh, punishment. In fact, if anything, they better strive hard to catch on and catch up with you because you've explained things to them. Okay, so that's the meaning of this wonderful hadith. And let's open it up for discussion. How does this, uh, the lessons learned here impact you in your personal life? How it can make you a better practicing Muslim? Go ahead uh, and start us off, Sister Sabrine. That is so correct. And this is uh, something to be ponder over, not just uh, we should warn the people if we can, you know, and hope that they will heed, they will listen to what we have to say. And if they don't, that's between them and Allah. At least we know we've done the right thing. What they say about starting with her relatives like the old saying clean your own house first if you can i think that we should warn our own relatives our families our children and let them know what is going to happen inshallah if they don't heed to allah's will and that's where we should start. And if they do, if they refuse to listen, like many of them will, that's on them too. But at least we'll know that as believers ourselves that we've done what we're supposed to do. We'll also keep trying, keep trying to uh, build and to grow in, in our community our Muslim community, that's what I mean, and struggle for this deed because it is important. We should let them know how important it is. Exactly, guys, and this is a good point she brought out because we're living in the days of all these here in America, men and women who people refer to as scholars and these men and women have both millions and millions of followers on YouTube and these men and women travel around the country to your mosque, to my mosque, uh, giving lectures about Islam. People thinking that these men and women are so righteous. These men and women know the Dean. When you look at them and look at their wives, Subhana Allah, how can he, this man, save you from the hellfire or warn you when he can't warn his wife? You look at these famous men and Google who, how their wives look. Their wives don't dress properly. Their wives are wearing tight blue jeans that's showing the shape of their derriere. Their wives are dressed in short clothing where you can see the shape of their body. Some of their wives don't even wear hijab. But you would look at this famous man and think he's a scholar of Islam? Would the Prophet Muhammad be married to a wife who didn't cover up? If Aisha didn't wear hijab, if Aisha refused to dress properly, do you think the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have kept her as a wife? He would have divorced her. These men can, are not even strong enough to let go of the women that they are married to who don't practice the religion. But you call these men sheikh and scholar and you allow them in your communities, you know, to give dawah. 
when they can't even get their wives to obey them. And that's the thing. A woman is supposed to obey her husband unless her husband tells her to do something that contradicts the law. And there's two such famous men. They belong to the same institute, the same school, Islamic so-called online schools. They're all over the newspaper, all in the media. Look at both of their wives. One of them, wife, doesn't wear a hijab at all. The other one is dressed like a Kafir woman with a rag on her head. We have to be careful who we choose to take our knowledge of Islam from. And both of those men have trimmed beards. Look at their beards. How can you warn me to fear a law? when you are showing me that you don't have any fear because a beard is an obligation the prophet said trim the mustache but leave the beard alone and these brothers have beautiful trimmed beards which is haram any man that trims his beard has the curse of a law on him no wonder their wives don't dress properly because those men are not dressed properly either by trimming and cutting and shaving their beards you know, so we have to be careful who we take our knowledge from. If these people are not warning themselves to fear a law, if they're not warning their own wives to fear a law, how can they be a warner to you? And what does that say about you for being stupid enough to look up to these men or look up to these women when they are openly letting the world know that they don't really believe in Allah. Because if they did, why would they openly show their sins? Anyone else would like to share? Okay, let's take a look at the Hadith one last time before we close out for tonight. Let's take a look at the Hadith. Again, the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he received the message from Allah to go out and warn his family. He immediately got up. He stood on a hillock and he said, Oh, people of Abdul Manif, I am sent to you as a warner. And I am just like a man who sees the enemy coming towards you. And I want to protect you. So I tell you to be on guard. You would believe me then. Well, then believe me now when I'm telling you to save your souls from the hellfire. Of course, the people didn't listen. Just like today, people don't listen. They still choose to take these uh, innovative men and women as their rulers, their leaders, their scholars, their teachers. Shame on us. And we wonder why there's going to be more people in hell than paradise. I'd like to thank everybody for joining and participating in this session. Please make sure everybody is here for the classes tomorrow. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka.